The digital development covers a number of areas and it's not all the areas in digital development, you know, we may talk about that later, but you have responsibility for the management of le the legislative programme, which is both national and European, and it covers areas like the cyber security bill, the telecommunication services and the digital hub development agencies, as well as the work in Europe with the Council of Ministers around the digital single market and the review of telecoms regulatory framework. And that alone is actually really a critical development in terms of infrastructure. Um, you were also going to start a new strategy for the digital strategy. And I think that's a really welcome development. And I know you're going to have a public consultation in that area. And I'm sure lots of people who are here today will be very interested in that. So we're really interested in hearing from you, Minister, on this one of your major areas and look forward to your presentation on the Irish National Cyber Security Centre securing Ireland's digital future. Thank you very much, Minister. Cyber security is uh, one of those terms that has become, I suppose, ubiqu ubiquitous without there being any great understanding uh, of what it means. And critically, I think the implications of us getting this wrong as a state are not that well understood. Uh, this afternoon, I'm going to explore those issues uh, briefly, uh, set out what already has been done in this regard, and establish uh, what our plans uh, are over the next uh, period of time. The essence of a sovereign state is the ability to facilitate social and economic interaction uh, for the common good in accordance with the rule of law. The state has the ability to facilitate security uh, in the physical sense. If you look at the film Dunkirk was released uh, last week and served as a reminder of national security as well as warfare. Dunkirk was of course a significant uh, military defeat brought about by a physical invasion. By the end of the Second World War, however, technological advances, if one can refer to some inventions that have, as advances, it means that uh, the world would not see a conflict like it uh, again. In the intervening decades, national security has continued to evolve uh, to an extent that conflict is no longer waged uh, on just a physical setting with military invasions and so forth. We're now obviously in the digital age. Our societies and its parts are connected in ways that, uh, which only a few years ago or a few decades ago, in some cases, uh, seem to belong to realms of science fiction. The examples are all around us, from financial services and banking to administration of healthcare, education and social services, and even to more significant infrastructure that's critical to the functioning uh, of society. Such infrastructure includes the electricity network, the gas network, telecommunications, transport network, and so forth. From the national level to the individual level, there was a great need to have a resilient, safe, and secure digital technologies for citizens, businesses, uh, and the state itself. Moreover, security and resilience as the basis of trustworthy computing are key enablers of our digital economy and society. Everything from online shopping to transactional e-government services to small and medium-sized enterprises offering digital services uh, require appropriate security and also resilient measures to uh, engender trust and confidence from consumers uh, and the marketplace and to secure the personal data of individuals. Connected technology, the Internet of Things, has become so per pervasive and ingrained that it is now evident that it is more unlikely of, of, of sectors, for example, in agriculture, and highlighting how useful and effectiveness the, the, uh, such connectedness can be, uh, a colleague of mine told of a farmer who had invested in a brand new tractor, John Deere model. Uh, tractors are, of course, part of the uh, original critical infrastructure uh, of farms and agribusness. And when they break down, they can mount, uh, costs can mount quickly in terms of getting somebody out to fix them. Unfortunately for this particular farmer, the new tractor broke down in the middle of a field of an isolated part of the farm. Mm -hmm. Usually there's a headache, you call out a mechanic and you have a time delay and you give order parts or whatever else. But not so on the connected tractor. In this case, the farmer uh, from the field phoned the dealership who in turn contacted the company, um, who in turn contacted the technical support section in the US and for the US, a member of the support uh, team was able to diagnose the problem uh, with a tractor located thousands of miles away in a field uh, in Ireland, and reset the onboard computer. The entire incident took less than half an hour to resolve. Now, my colleague in that case correctly spoke of this example of real intangible uh, progress and how connected devices are transforming businesses and communities on a global level. However, not spoken were the potential downsides and the new vulnerabilities. A tractor with an onboard computer 
that's connected to the internet, has clear advantages, for sure, but also leaves it more vulnerable in a way that tractors have not been before. And uh, you wouldn't like to be ploughing a field off the cliffs of Moher, perhaps, and suddenly find that your, your tractor is hijacked. But the potential for cyber attack is unfortunately real, and ransomware uh, demand, um, a, a ransomware demand, for example. Um, another example of connectedness transforming communities is Galway's urban traffic control system, and I'm sure in other parts of the, the, the country as well underpinned by sensors, intelligent traffic lights, cameras across two, two dozen junctions uh, in the city. The system is overseen from the traffic control room at City Hall and is instrumental in keeping traffic flowing, uh, particularly as it enters the city from the M6. However, even a small system's failure, uh, one example, for example, that recently caused chaos, um, a, a failure at the Parkmore uh, Junction, for example, impacted on thousands of workers at the largest IDA business park in the West and had knock-on effects across the city and indeed uh, lasted for a period of time. So with the potential to paralyse, in that case, a small city and a small country, to paralyse the transport network uh, and all of the negative effects that this has, you know, I, I think that reflects the importance of cyber security and how uh, real and apparent it has become. Government is very much aware of the opportunities offered by digital technologies, but also, inversely, the new threats. Uh, vectors to these technologies leave the state vulnerable. Established in 2011 on foot of a government decision with seconded expertise from the Defence Forces on Garda Shikona and UCD, the National Cyber Security Centre, or NCSC, is a primary body responsible for dealing with these new threats in this country. The day-to-day -day role of the NCSC focuses on three distinct areas. One, providing support, training and advice for IT units across government. Two, providing an incident response capability. And three, acting as a conduit for cybersecurity information exchange between European, our, our partners and IT security bodies within Ireland. The work of the NCSC is informed by the National Cyber Security Strategy 2015 to 2017, which as well as formally establishing the NCSC as a statutory body, set the agenda for cybersecurity in this country. The strategy also recognises and anticipates the transposition of a critical piece of EU legislation, the Security of Network and Information Systems Directive, or NIS Directive. The directive was approved last July and is required to be transposed into Irish law uh, by May 2018. This directive represents a step change in the manner to which the state engages in cyber security, uh, marking a, a shift to legally binding quasi-regulatory style a system for certain critical infrastructure operators and so-called digital service providers. Launched as part of the first EU cyber security strategy, the directive aims to ensure that all EU citizens have access to robust, secure and high quality infrastructure and services. In brief, it places certain obligations on member states concerning the prevention, handling of and response to cyber attacks and incidents affecting ICT systems across various sectors. It requires member states to increase their level of preparedness and have a minimum set of cyber security capabilities at regulatory and operational levels. It also establishes formal EU cooperation arrangements to improve mutual collaboration in an area which more often than others does not respect uh, national borders. Key firms and utilities are to be designated operators of essential services, which require obligations and incident reporting requirements binding on them. Uh, this will include firms from a wide range of critical national infrastructure, including electricity, uh, gas and oil companies, airlines, uh, shipping firms, ports, airports, water supply networks and hospitals. A key part of the directive involves ensuring that operators of essential services take appropriate and proportionate measures to manage security risks to report uh, serious incidents and to comply with the requirements of the NCSC. The importance of safeguarding critical national infrastructure is self-evident in the context of the WannaCry's crippling of the NHS network uh, last May or the spate of cyber attacks on electricity supplies in Ukraine uh, which have plunged Kiev into darkness on several occasions uh, in recent years. In addition to designating critical utilities as operators of essential services, the NIS directive requires digital service providers, meaning online marketplaces, search engines and cloud computing services, to take measures to manage security risks, to report particular incidents and comply with the NCSC requirements. Given the relative importance uh, of these services versus oper operators of essential services, the directive takes a more uh, flexible regulatory approach with regard to these entities. In order to avoid a less effective, more fragmented approach to the regulation, the directive requires digital service providers to be regulated by the member state in which their main office is based. 
This has understandably generated interest at the EU level in Ireland's approach, as in light of a number of digital service providers that are based uh, in this country. The Irish implementation of this aspect of the directive will have an important bearing on the digital service provider regulatory regime uh, across the Union. The directive will be transposed by legislation over the coming months, but the Department has been involved in an ongoing process of uh, consultation with likely operators of essential services and digital service providers since last year, and will continue to engage with them through the process of transposition and thereafter. The issue of cybersecurity has never been uh, too far from the headlines in recent months. From successive ransomware attacks such as WannaCry to the, inter the inference with interference with democratic processes in the United States and France, uh, a climate of uncertainty now exists with respect to the use of technologies which uh, have become integral to the way we do business, socialize, and to a large extent live in the 21st century. The fact that threat actors are constantly evolving does not help matters. No less uh, than any other area of ICT, successive waves of malware make use of state-of-the-art innovations which have cybersecurity expertise in both public and private sectors alike, playing a perpetual game uh, of catch-up with hackers who sometimes have the resources of nation states to prop up their efforts. Contending with these threats uh, have involved a change of culture on a, a worldwide level as countries face up uh, to what NATO has recognised now to, the, to be the fifth domain of warfare, land, air, sea, space, now being joined to the list by cyberspace. Cybersecurity, once treated as a fringe concern, has evolved into a critical concern of governments through the European Union and the wider world. And whilst uh, I am necessarily constrained when it comes to speaking about the work of the NCSC from an operational perspective, I can say that Ireland has not been found wanting in this arena. With respect to the WannaCry malware in particular, I understand that preparations had been underway in the NCSC for incidents of this kind for some time, and I note the fact that government ICT withstood the attack without serious incident as evidence that good practices are being followed, not only within the NCSC, but also in the public uh, sector. There are obvious questions underpinning all of this. What about staffing uh, and resources? And historically, this has been an issue, understandably, given the constraints uh, imposed over the last number of years with public finances. However, the NCSC has recently completed a programme of recruitment uh, covering two separate grades, and new staff members have joined the unit. A further campaign of recruitment is planned for later in the year. This is not a simple area, and the skills required are in high demand globally, particularly in Ireland, due to the companies uh, based here. We expect recruitment to be a challenge, uh, but the recent campaign has shown that there are skilled, experienced people who want to work uh, for the state. Cybersecurity, however, like the digital world, is ever-changing and evolving. We need to ensure that our policies and actions are underpinned by a national strategy that is comprehensive but flexible. And my officials are working on the new national cybersecurity strategy. It is my intention to invite experts from industry and academia to assist in creating a robust strategy that will protect our society and as we continue to harness the benefits of technology and apply them uh, to all um, sorts of areas and sectors. Cybersecurity has become central to national security, and we in government readily uh, understand this, and I'm confident that the, in, the, in the NCSC and in the department, we have a strong team to defend our country and society from cyber uh, attacks. So I'd like to thank you uh, for your attention.